Hey everyone, I'm Joe. Um, this is a video about my 2007 Porsche Cayman S. Uh, this is the top 10 reasons why you should own a Cayman S, uh, specifically of this generation, the 987, in 2020. Um, the first of them, number 10, I would have to say is price. Uh, when the Cayman first came out uh, in 2006, I, I was immediately taken by the car. I, I specifically loved the size, a couple other things which we'll talk about in a few minutes. The fun per dollar factor is extremely high. Um, like I say, you can get one with not a lot of mileage, not a lot of wear and tear for surprisingly attractive price, uh, especially if you compare that with even a slightly newer one. Number nine, I would say, um, you know, reasons to own this car would be rarity. And this also makes it a little bit of a treasure hunt if you're in the market for one. Um, the Cayman was introduced just as the recession hit. Uh, there's a bicyclist up here, so we're going to go a little bit slow. Um, but as a consequence of the recession and everything else, this is a pure sports car, so not too many people would be buying it as an only car. Uh, and sales did have a pretty significant tumble as a result. Number eight is actually the flip side of the dynamic this car got saddled with in the market when it debuted. A lot of people had said at the time, oh, it's not a 911. Um, and that's true, it's not a 911. It is less expensive. It was meant to be Porsche's entry level coupe accompanying the Boxster. Um, but there's an upside of that. The people who are not really into the car for its performance per se for you know the, the kind of brand snobs would never buy this car so if you see someone with a Cayman they're probably in the Cayman purely because they love to drive um, which is you know you know 911s are gorgeous cars there is certainly um, some extra performance there that you get for that higher cost but it's a sliding scale uh, number seven probably the first reason I ever looked at this car, the roof line. It's very much a pure interpretation of the, the Porsche Fastback. Uh, there are several cries to classic perf uh, Porsches of the past, including all the way back to the 50s, uh, some of their best design. Uh, there is a very elegant taper to the way this roof line goes into the rear fenders. It's a smooth line with just enough of a curve. Uh, certain angles, it's just breathtaking. Um, so, reason number six would be the relationship between the controls, specifically the steering wheel, uh, shifter, pedals. There's a very natural precision to them all. Uh, you can easily envision Porsche engineers setting up a bunch of dummies with like calipers and rulers and determining the exact location. It feels like the type of car where the controls were laid out before the rest of the car was built. Number five uh, in my list, I would say is lightness. Um, and that's a point that I think is worth talking about a little bit. Um, people talk about light cars and sometimes I think that means something different to different people. We have a, we have a little road here to have a little fun. Um, this car is well under 3,000 uh, 3, pounds spend, depending on how it's set up. Uh, and this is not light in the sense of you feel like you're driving a tin can. It's light in the sense of lean and purposeful and basically the type of machine from which all the fat has been cut out. One of the benefits of that light weight is obviously it steers, turns, etc. Uh, with a lot less ease. Uh, it also doesn't have that ponderous feel that larger, heavier cars have. And that's, to, to Porsche's credit, they do a great job of keeping their cars from gaining pounds from one generation to another. Uh, to that number four uh, in the reasons to buy this car would be steering feel. That's another point that is pretty nuanced. That does not just mean the heft of the wheel. That's actually road feel. Uh, this is a car, like many Porsches, that tangles with information from the road. Uh, you'll find it, it's not only the heft, it is um, a kind of, you know, I'm trying to avoid all the cliches that the automotive journalists use, telepathic steering, etc. Obviously, it's very precise. It's a Porsche. Um, that's true of many German cars. 
but there is another dimension of information that you get from the steering wheel rim in this car. Uh, it literally will tingle with texture. So if you, for example, drive between asphalt and blacktop, you will feel the difference in the steering wheel. Uh, if you're on a road where there's a lot of off-camber turns and bumps, you will feel the tingle in the steering wheel, which is actually the chassis of the car informing you how much grip you have. Uh, that's something that I think we're losing in a lot of more modern cars. For three reasons to own this generation Porsche Cayman S, uh, I would say mid-engine handling. Um, obviously the Cayman and the Boxster are mid-engine, uh, whereas the 911 is rear-engine. There, there are a lot of interesting traits that endows the car with, uh, and there is something to be said for uh, why the Corvette has just switched to rear and uh, mid-engine to why a lot of supercars are mid-engine. Uh, and that's ultimately because of the way it affects the handling balance. Everyone talks about this, what does it really mean? Uh, it means that when you are driving this car in turns, you're going to really feel an eagerness to turn in that goes beyond what you would feel in like a front engine or a rear engine car that simply had very good steering. Um, the actual center of mass of the car is right behind me, literally six inches behind my driver's seat is the engine. Uh, as a result, you get very, very quick transient responses, left to right turns, transitions are a whole lot easier because you don't have to uh, do as much work with your tires to shift the mass. Um, really does a lot to balance the drive. Uh, number two, that would be the flat, flat six sound. People, you know, as far back as I can remember, even as a kid, talk about, oh, the flat six sounds great. And yes, it's true. But until you've actually driven one and heard the range of noises and the character that these engines have, um, I mean, it's, it's really spectacular. Whirs, mechanical, like that snarl, even in the trailing throttle, uh, is absolutely magnificent. Uh, and the number one reason uh, I would say to own a Porsche Cayman S is the overall purity of the drive. Uh, this car, like very few others, exists almost purely to be fun to drive and to delight the driver.